When I wanted to go and make digital copies of my slides, I did a Google search. I looked at a lot of different options. One of the options that I found was to actually go and use a flatbed scanner where you actually take your slide or your digital or your negative, you put it on the flatbed scanner and it actually makes a scan of the image. Another device that I found online that you could buy was these devices that you could actually insert your, your slide into. And the device itself would actually operate almost like a scanner, but it was basically just for slides, where it would actually take a picture of that slide for you and it would basically send it out to your computer. So there's not a lot of configuration, it's pretty much an automatic process. Another option that I found online that people said you could do is you could actually load your slide into your slide projector and project it on the screen. And then what you would do is you'd actually take a picture of that screen with your camera. That option I didn't really like as much because when you think about what you have to do to, to use a slide projector, you need, a, you need a dark room, you put up your screen, you use so many variables that affect the image quality. What's your, what lens are you using with your, with your slide projector? How dark did you get the room? It just didn't seem like an option that I was really that interested in. One option that I really did like came off of instructables.com was to actually go and have a box and you basically build a slide mount right on the box and you put a light source inside that box. Now that light source can be a, a lamp, or a, like a, a lantern or a lamp. You can also use a speed light at the back. But what you're really doing is you're illuminating that slide on the box and then you're using your digital camera to take a picture of that slide. I really like that option because I had everything that I needed in terms of materials to make the box that illuminate the slide. But on top of that, I have a micro four thirds camera and I have a macro lens. And what that really allowed me to do is that allowed me to fill my entire frame with that slide. So I was pretty much almost getting the exact megapixels out of that slide that my camera could do. Now, obviously, for me, when I, when I did it, I have a little bit of a white border left so that I can make sure that I'm getting the entire slide. I just crop the white border off. So some of the materials that you're gonna need for this is you're gonna need a cardboard box. And I'm just using a cardboard box that I got from Amazon. But another thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need some toothpicks. And I find that the round toothpicks work really well because the diameter of the round toothpick really well matches the width or the thickness of the slide. What I do with the toothpicks as well is I actually cut the top of the toothpick off to where the tip is so that you get a nice uniform diameter across the length of the toothpick. You're also gonna need some hot melt glue and some white paper. Outside of that, one of the, this, this, one of the decisions you're gonna to have to make is what do you wanna use as a light source? Do you wanna use a speed light or do you wanna use some sort of LED lantern or lamp? If you're using an LED lantern or lamp, you're gonna to wanna to be able to diffuse that light, otherwise you're gonna get an, your slide is not gonna be evenly illuminated. So you can use tissue paper, you can use a white takeout box. It also depends on on the light source you have. Some light sources are gonna be better than others. So the next step in the process is gonna to be to actually cut a hole in the box that's gonna let the light pass through and illuminate the slide with. For a 35 millimeter film, you're gonna want an opening between 38 and 40 millimeters for two reasons. One, it gives you some adjustment in the horizontal direction when you're actually mounting and installing everything. So if there's a little bit of a mess up in terms of the actual space, that it doesn't block the light. The second thing is you don't want the cardboard in any way to block the light from illuminating the slide material. So if you go too narrow, then you might not be able to illuminate the edges of the slide, which means you can have to crop off that because you can have these dark, dark edges on the, on the left and right sides of the slide. The next thing to think about is how much to cut out vertically. So what I like to do is I like to get an idea of this is where I think the slide is gonna to need to be in the vertical direction. I cut a little bit below it, a little bit above it. And then later on, when we get to the next stage of the build, We'll figure out exactly where do we need that slide to, to sit. So the next step in the process is to actually build the vertical channel. So it's going to do two things. One, it's going to line up the slide in the horizontal plane, but it's also going to help guide the slide down when you're actually loading, loading the slide into the box. So for this, what you're going to need is you're going to need two toothpicks that you've already cut the tips off of, but you're also going to need four toothpicks that you haven't. And what I like to do is I like to measure out how far the slide needs to be by actually placing the slide over the opening of the hole and then using the pointed ends of the toothpicks to actually poke holes where the slide, where the toothpick should, should go along the edge of the slide. The reason that I, I use the toothpicks to poke the holes is it gives me a visual cue as to where to put the glue. When I actually apply the hot melt glue, I'm actually gonna apply the hot melt glue slightly to the right, but basically down between the two toothpicks that you've actually poked the holes in. The reason for that is it gives the the toothpick a place to sit without actually impacting or touching where the slide's eventually gonna sit. When you go to put the toothpick that's gonna be glued in there on, what I like to do is to actually place it on the inside of 
of the where the glue is going to be and then roll it into the glue and the reason that you do that is so that when you put the slide down it doesn't come into contact with any of the glue now the hot, hot melt glue is obviously going to be cold it's not going to stick to the slide but if you have little bits of hot glue kind of sticking out those bumps or the or the friction that's going to that that's going to cause is just going to make that slide not slide up and down as freely and as easily as it could and that's made the main reason for doing it that way so once you've done it on the right side I'd go ahead and do that again on the left. The next part of the build, you're going to have to go and figure out how high on that slide box that you've, that you've created you need that slide to sit. So for this, you're going to have to figure out which camera and which lens you're going to actually use to do the copying. Once you've selected those, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put a light source inside the box and you're going to want to have your camera set up to take a picture of that slide. So now that the light is in the box, the slide will be illuminated. We're not really worrying right now about having the slide properly exposed or uniformly lit. We just want to be able to see the image on the slide. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to move your camera up or back from the slide until you can get the entire slide in view. And you're going to want to make sure that it's focused. Once you get that organized, you can actually move the slide up and down in that, in that window to figure out where exactly the slide needs to be mounted to properly take a picture of the slide with your camera. Once that has been me measured and found, you want to actually mark where the bottom is on in that opening so that we can put a, a, a toothpick at that spot. So now that that's been measured, what you're going to want to do is actually go and take your hot, hot glue gun, just like we did before, and you're going to want to draw a line of glue on the bottom, bottom line of the box. And again, you're going to put your toothpick in the middle and you're going to roll it down into the hot glue. And again, the goal is to have that bottom toothpick support the slide when it slides down. When this is done, you're going to be able to slide the slide down the two vertical channels of the toothpick and it's going to rest on that bottom bottom rail. When it's resting there, you're going to be able to take a picture of your camera and have it actually be in the frame where you want it to show up. One of the things to note at this point, the slide's just probably going to fall towards you if you actually let go of it because there's nothing actually holding the slide there. The next part of the process is to really put a crossbar or a cross toothpick in there to make sure that it holds the slide in. So what I like to do is I basically put the I put the box on so on its on its back so you basically look down and gravity does the work. You put the slide the slide in so that it's it's there it's touching the bottom toothpick both both left and right toothpicks there. And then what I'll go and do is I'll put a piece a toothpick across the bottom so it doesn't blocking the visual um, part of the slide. And then I just hot, hot melt glue the two ends in place so that that toothpick stays there. What you're gonna find is that once that's done and once that's dry, just having that one bar on the bottom is actually gonna be enough to actually keep the slide in place where it needs to be. Now that the box is complete, it's in the sense that it can actually hold the slide in place and you can take the picture of it. The next thing that I like to do is to actually take some white paper and line the inside of the box. The reason that I do this is to prevent any light that's bouncing around the inside of the box to add any color cast or hue to the sense to the film that's then taken taken by the camera. Now that the box has been completed, the only thing left for you to think about is what you want to light the slide with. So you've got a lot of different options. You've got a speed light, so you can cut a hole in the back and you can connect, connect the speed light up to your camera wirelessly or through an extension cable. Or another thing you can do is you can use an LED lantern or a lamp and you can stick it in the box. If you use an LED lantern or a lamp, I would really recommend using some sort of diffusion device to make sure that you diffuse that light, you get a nice soft light, you don't get any hot spots in your film slide. Different ways you can do that is you can use like a Chinese takeout container, you can use some tissue paper. It really depends on, on what your actual needs are and what you're trying to do. Um, and that's pretty much it. So once you've got that done, you're basically off to the races, you can actually go in and start taking copies of your slides.